Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x times sine inverse of x dx. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'm actually going to solve it two ways. First method of solution was inspired by the subscriber who sent it in. It's a little more slick. And then I'll solve it again the traditional way. Traditional meaning probably how you would see it done in like a textbook or your solutions manual if this was from your book. Okay, so to start things off, I'm going to make a substitution. I'm actually going to let t equal sine inverse of x. Sometimes it's easier not to deal with the inverse trig functions and make a substitution right off the bat. This means sine of t is equal to x. And then now if we differentiate both sides, we get cosine t dt equals dx. So let's rewrite this integral all in terms of t. Now we'll have, instead of this x right here, sine of t. Okay, great. And then sine inverse of x is next. That's just going to be t. And then who's dx? Well, it's right here, cosine t dt. Okay, and this integral looks a lot less frightening. As soon as I see sine t and cosine t, and then they're being multiplied by another t, which is a polynomial function, really. I know I'm going to do integration by parts, and the easiest way to contend with both of these guys is if I use a trig identity. So we know sine 2t, or sine 2 theta, is 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I'm just missing the 2 here. That means 1 half sine 2t, or 2 theta would be sine theta cosine theta. That'll just make things a lot more slick when we move for our, to do our integration next, okay? So I've got t, I'll put a one half times sine two t now dt. And hopefully you notice, yep, it's time to do integration by parts. So I'm gonna use a tabular method. If you haven't seen how to do tabular integration by parts, it's life-changing, especially when you move on to differential equations you do so much integration by parts in that class. So it's very helpful. It's also called the DI method. There's lots of different names for it. But basically, whatever U would be for your by parts problem, you put in the first column that we're calling D. So I'm going to put 1 half T here. And then sine 2T is what DV would be. So that goes in the second column. And it works best when you have a polynomial function with something else being multiplied by something else that's easily integrable for multiple rounds. So derivative of 1 half t, you just keep going until you get a zero in that left column, is going to be 1 half. And then one more time, derivative of 1 half is zero. And now I integrate the same number of times. So antiderivative of sine 2t would be negative 1 half cosine 2t. And then once more, negative 1 fourth sine 2t. Always dividing by 2 because of the 2 in front of the t. Okay, then we take products on the diagonal from left column to right column, one row down, and then also the signs alternate, and we're done. It's really that easy. So we'll take 1 half t times negative 1 half cosine 2t. That's going to give me negative 1 fourth t cosine 2t. And then the next product's going to be positive since these two negatives cancel out, and I'll have plus 1 eighth sine 2t plus c. Okay, now our task is to get back to the original variable of the problem. So we have to use some trig identities to get back there. Remember, we made the substitution that t was sine inverse of x, okay? So I'm obviously going to replace cosine 2t and sine 2t with the appropriate double angle identities. Also remember, this means that sine of t is equal to x. So when you're picking which of the three cosine double angles to use, I would use the one that only involves sines because that's the substitution that we made. All right, so here we've got that negative 1 fourth t just hanging out, minding its business. And then cosine 2t is 1 minus 2 sine squared t. I'm choosing that one since it involves only sines. Plus 1 eighth times sine 2t is 2 sine t cosine t. And then we have plus c. Okay, now I could easily come through sine squared t is going to be x squared. This is going to be an x. This is going to be sine inverse of x. The only term that's left to contend with is this cosine t, so yes, we need to make a triangle. If I know sine of t equals x, then show that ratio here. t would be my angle, 
90 degree angle in the other corner. Sine of t is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which would be x over 1. And then the missing side here, the adjacent side, would be square root of 1 minus x squared. You can do the Pythagorean theorem in your head. No one will be angry with you. And then I think we're ready. We can go sub everything back. So we've got negative 1 fourth, t is sine inverse of x, times 1 minus 2, sine squared t is just x squared, plus 1 eighth times 2 was 1 fourth, sine of t is x, and then right here, this cosine t is going to be ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just square root 1 minus x squared plus c. Okay, for my final answer, I'm going to multiply everything out. That way we can see everything term by term. So when we compare with the second method of solution, it'll be easy to verify that we arrived at the same result. So distributing negative 1 fourth sine inverse of x will have negative 1 fourth sine inverse of x plus 1 half x squared sine inverse of x plus 1 fourth x square root 1 minus x squared plus c. And this is not the most attractive looking answer because you see how that negative is what we're leading with. No, no, no. Let's start with our best foot forward. Let's be positive. So you can put the positive 1 half x squared first or you could put the other term. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to put both the positive ones first and then put the negative one last. Minus 1 fourth sine inverse of x plus c. Is everything good? I think so. Okay, fabulous. So that's one method. Now, I think probably the more traditional approach, I'll show that now. Other option, option two. Same integral, x sine inverse of x dx. You could just jump straight to by parts. And we know when we have an inverse trig function, we usually let that be u. So then dv would have to be x dx. And this will work beautifully. So du would be 1 over square root 1 minus x squared dx. And then what would v be? 1 half x squared. Excellent. So then by our biparts formula, this is going to be uv. So that'll give us 1 half x squared sine inverse of x. Oh, I remember. I remember seeing that the first way we did it. So we must be on the right track. <laughs> Minus, and then I'll take the 1 half out. We have integral vdu, which would be x squared over square root 1 minus x squared dx. Yes, this product right here. Okay, so you now have to figure out how to attack this integral or approach it. I don't know why I need to be so violent, but yes, I'm in an attack mood. So I would just jump straight to trig sub. I know some of you guys are clever and you like to play around with interesting u subs. So if that was your approach, let me know in the comments down below. I just went for a traditional little trig sub. Since we have constant minus variable quantity squared, I let x equal one sine theta. So then dx would be cosine theta d theta. And maybe on the side, we'll just do this little integral here so we don't have to worry about rewriting everybody every step of the way as we clean it up. Do you know what I mean? So we have x squared over square root 1 minus x squared dx. The numerator is going to become sine squared theta. The denominator is going to become square root 1 minus, oops, my head was doing the next step, so sine squared theta. And then dx over here is cosine theta d theta. Well, the whole point is trig sub is so we can use our Pythagorean identities. So this is going to be cosine squared theta. But then remember, it's underneath the radical, which means technically it's absolute value cosine theta, but we restrict theta when we do trig sub. So we don't have to worry if it's going to be negative. These will cancel. And then all I'm left with now is integral sine squared theta d theta. And then hopefully... You're like a little math robot right now, and you go, oh, anytime I see sine squared in an integral all by itself, I'm going to replace it with the appropriate half angle identity. I take the one half out. Take those constants out. It will make your life easier. 
So sine squared theta is equal to 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Leave the 1 half outside. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Antiderivative of cosine 2 theta is going to be 1 half sine 2 theta. And I'll say plus d. I want to save plus c for the grand finale. And then let's clean this up. So this will be 1 half theta minus 1 fourth. Well, instead of sine 2 theta, let me replace it with 2 sine theta cosine theta plus d. And then again, it's triangle time. So remember, we had let uh, x equal sine theta, yes? Okay, so we need to draw a triangle where sine of theta is equal to x. That's the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse. Why yes, this is the exact same triangle from earlier with theta instead of t as our angle. And then at long last, we have 1 half plain old theta is going to be sine inverse of x minus, this is 1 half, sine theta is x. And then what's cosine theta? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that'll be square root 1 minus x squared plus d. And then you could just plop this in from earlier. So please don't forget that earlier we had a minus one half in front of the integral. So we'll multiply all of this by a minus one half and I'll add that first term back in. So all together, what do we have? So much loveliness. We have one half x squared sine inverse of x minus one half times everything above. One half sine inverse of x minus 1 half x square root 1 minus x squared. Don't put the constant in there, just put plus c, like it's a new one, forget about the old guy. And then, does this match up with the first solution? It better, it sure had better. So 1 half x squared sine inverse of x minus, if I distribute now, where are we going? Minus 1 fourth sine inverse of x plus, 1 fourth x square root 1 minus x squared plus c and you can go check that's exactly what we got last time so i guess now the question remains which do you think was more efficient which do you prefer and most importantly which would have occurred to you if you encountered this integral that's the thing so anyways, please vote down below. <laughs> I'm also going to put this integral, I'll put it on my Instagram and start a poll, but I don't know, people don't always comment. It just depends on their mood, I suppose. But please comment down below, let me know. Method one or method two, if you did something entirely different, I'd love to hear what it was. And if you, some of you guys are good at weaseling your way out of a trig sub. I don't know, do you hate it so much? I rather like it. But if you did in the second approach, instead of doing trig sub, do something else. Let me know. I'm very curious. Okay, I'm off to work, but this was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And my Calculus 2 class is learning integration by parts this week, so this should be good. Though I realized the second method they couldn't do because they don't know trig sub yet. That's for, that's for next week. All right, bye guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math.